Hello, good morning. Welcome to join you today. We're coming to you live from our studios in Kokum Lemne. Coming up this morning, relief items continue to pour in for victims of the Akutumbo Dam spillage. We're live in Sogakope where the national executive of the NDC arrives to also donate relief items. Also, one person dead, two injured in a clash between some residents of Pankrono and Adabrakazongo in the Ashanti region. More as eyewitnesses say it was triggered by the killing of one person two years ago. Plus, group alleges mismanagement of public funds at the bulk oil and transportation company and demands resignation and prosecution of top management members. We have details as management of boss has dismissed the allegations, insisting the company is not engaged in any wrongdoing. We'll bring you business also in this package. My name is Aisha Ibrahim. Do stay for details. In response to Joy News' report highlighting the community's reliance on polluted lake water for domestic use, Rail Both World, a franchise holder of Volti Ghana Limited, has donated 500 bags of sachet water to Sokwe residents. The managing director, uh, Doris Boating, spoke to Joy News. In fact, due to Joy FM's reportage on the situation, at Sukwe and other areas yesterday we were attached. Bwati Kupak decided to support the people of Sukwe, uh, Mepe, Adada, uh, Gagave, and other areas. We have started with 500 for each, each community. But the starting is 7,000. We are distributing 7,000. And we'll be, we'll be in this till the situation returns to normal. We hope to... Uh, we hope to distribute about 20,000 bags by the time this thing has gone down. And we want to say to the people affected that our heart goes out to them. We are standing solidly uh, behind them. And then whatever we can do to minimize their plight. We know what they are going through. Their livelihood, everything has been submerged in the water. And we, we feel so sorry, we feel so sad for them. This is the little we can do to support them. At least water is life and the least we can do to support them for this situation. We are so grateful to Joy Ocon for highlighting this story, letting us know the situation, the situation that the people are in. Body group back is touched by this situation and we decided to uh, mobilize ourselves and supply these affected individuals with water. In fact, the crisis it is it, a big crisis we are facing here and water is life. We, we hope to really get to them and satisfy their needs some way, somehow. Well, Assemblyman for the Sokwa Electoral Area, Edmund Fingara, has been expressing appreciation to join us for highlighting the plight of the residents. Senior I will thank voted back on behalf of the Sokwe traditional area and in support of my mama, Abonokaji, and then the queen of the tilapia market. Uh, Mama, uh, Mawla we, Mama, and other people closer to me. That we are very grateful to Water Go Park. And we are very, 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 very grateful to Joy News for coming to our aid. If we're not to be them, Water Go Park will not hear the past. And I will mention it that yesterday, just after their story, less than five minutes, um, the officer in charge of Sogakopa, that is Sogakopa District um, Waterways, Ghana Water, came looking for me and asking questions. Now, is this how the situation is? And I said, yes. 
As I'm speaking, water is flowing. Water is flowing. But not at the rate that is supposed to come. But water is flowing. We are very grateful to join us for helping us to this far. And we are still now we have and a small one that we can use to cook and pop. But there are other amenities that we need. People that the, the villagers ejected from their houses need shelter. They need clothing to cover themselves while sleeping. This blanket and other things. Yesterday, not more came. And they gave, they supported a few. And they said the promise coming today to continue. But they are having a, a small challenge. We plead on them. Uh, we need mattresses and other things for the people to sleep on. We are very grateful. We, need, we are very grateful. The electricians that are going around disconnecting the buildings that are falling, they need safety protection uh, equipment to go, warranty boots and then other things to go. We are very grateful for joining, for helping us. And we need more. This morning, officials of the NDC also donated some relief items to uh, affected residents. My colleague, Carlos Coloni, has been bringing us updates. Have been brought uh, uh, for the uh, flood victims, and we also have bags of rice here which is going to be distributed among the 11 constituencies that have been affected which include the south tongue so the donation is actually happening here uh, which means that all the other constituencies would have to pick up their uh, you know relief items from here so it, it this place is more like a centralized place where the donation uh, is happening and then from here uh, the party big wigs will be you know going to tour the affected areas uh, in the uh, Volta region and other parts of the region. And so some dignitaries are arriving, as you can see in your shot there. Uh, a lot of them are coming and um, we are expecting, you know, the uh, Speaker of Parliament to also appear here. A number of people are expected to be here. We want to show you the, the, the trucks that are carrying the relief items pretty soon. And then um, we will... Uh, run some interviews by you to, to appreciate what's really happening here. Yeah, so in your shot, you see the uh, truck carrying the cooking oil, and uh, this is what is going to be distributed to the uh, affected or the flood victims here. Then we have uh, water, which is portable water in bottles. You can see that in your shot there, uh, a truck. Uh, we really don't know the number. Then uh, there is another truck actually uh, which has uh, bags of rice, actually. So the relief items, in fact, the rice is in two trucks. As you can see from the extreme, these are the trucks carrying the uh, number of bags that the National Democratic Congress is actually, uh, you know, distributing to flood uh, victims here in the Vault region and parts in the Estujaman district of the eastern region and so you can see the numbers there uh, quite a number uh, which is supposed to uh, go to uh, about uh, 11 constituencies so if you are watching us we are live from um, Sogakope here in the south Tong district of the Volta region where the national democratic congress is actually making a donation i mean to uh, flood victims across the eight uh, uh, affected, uh, you know, district here. And so that's the occasion. And pretty soon we will be uh, having uh, the party big weights, including the general secretary of the party, uh, Fifi Fiavi. We're going to listen to chairman of the NDC, uh, Sidon Kechia, who led the team to make the donation. We who are living outside the region, and are the main beneficiaries of your sacrifices. We should see it as an obligation on our part to help you to lessen your burden. 
We shouldn't pretend that whatever we will be spending here is just to do you any favor. In fact, it is paying part of our debt towards the people of this area who have already sacrificed to ensure that the rest of the country has electricity and can develop industries and can sleep on the electricity. So, Togbeo Mamao, today is not a period for long speeches. I'm only concluding by saying that I am not a scientist. I am not an engineer. But I have very serious questions to ask. Because the dam was not constructed yesterday. And flooding, when water is flowing into the lake, even if it is from Burkina Faso, it doesn't flow to Volta region within 24 hours. And so if we are doing our work well as scientists, we should know that when there is heavy rainfall, and water is entering the rivers that feed the dam. We should know that within some one month or two months, the effect could be calculated and preventive actions should be taken. This is not the first time the dam is being opened for uh, water to spill. We must ask, how come that in all the previous years that we have had cause to spill water, the effect has not been this devastating? There are questions that we should ask. But I would not say that we should stop the relief activity and be pursuing the causes. Let us chase away the cat. At the appropriate time, we will have to tame the mouse. We will have to find answers to very serious questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We are begging all of you to come together. Let's forget for the time being our political differences. differences. Let us recognize that we are in crisis and so we can come together to deal with the crisis. After that one, we can go back to our various divisions. After that one, we can go back to find out the causes of the problem and to take such action that this type of thing will not be revisited to anybody in this country. I want to thank you very much. I want to urge you to stay strong. I am happy that so far we haven't heard about any recorded deaths. And that speaks volumes to the dexterity of the people living within the area. I'm sure if this has happened elsewhere, we would have recorded several deaths. So I want to urge you on. I want to let you feel that the whole Ghana is behind you. All genuine Ghanaians must be behind you in this time of crisis. And I'm calling on government. We have, as a nation, found reason to go and donate to other countries that have found themselves in crisis like this. Oh. We know the nature of our financial situation now. If we think that we, uh, the required relief will be beyond us as Ghanaians, let us swallow our pride and then declare to the international community that Ghana is in crisis and whoever are our friends, can come to help us.
Thank you very much, and may God bless our homeland, Ghana. Away from Sogakope, one person has died and two others injured in a clash between the youth of Pankrono and Arapaka Zongo in the Ashanti region. Eyewitnesses say the latest incident is a reprisal of an incident in the area that led to the death of one uh, two years ago. Nana Boachi Adam has the rest of the story. Summering tension between the youth of Pankrono and Adabraka Zongo since the killing of one during a clash in a community football tournament two years ago. In what is suspected to be a revenge, one person was allegedly stabbed to death on Wednesday, October 18, after yet another tournament. On Thursday, October 19, the youth of Pankrono attempted a reprisal on an alleged murder of one resident identified as Bernard Ousu by at the Brakazongo youth. Two people sustained injuries before the intervention of the police. A resident narrated the incident to Joy News. because I commander office and a man, your friend Ernest. Which is best six months. Pankrono isn't happy with what happened. Both communities, including the police commander and community leaders, sat down to restore calm. But then, what should we expect when the attack continues? And our commander, future so here, at the movie. Now, a career, sir, a buy move, penny set, assembly, a carrier, Musi Binsi. Now, for fear and to attack, no, there are more, must have a war, be secure, could a pankrono. At the end the police, however, have visited the two communities. Investigations are underway. The eyewitness says some arrests have been made. Uh, in Kawedia, at the December Kasaka Kratch, I was there any year day, yeah, two now in Nipa two. Two persons have been arrested. They were arrested this morning. But if the police refuse to talk, I want to do that for them. Two now the police omo police custody. Which is early this morning, and they are picking omo. And you know the police who are on Kasa they are me to me kasa. Father of the deceased, Matthew Donko, expressed worry about the growing conflict among the two communities. He called for the imposition of a curfew in the area. The, the victim now, the disease is very, very innocent. What I am seeing now, I think the government should place a curfew on Pankrono and Adabraka. If possible, two or three weeks. Assembly member for the area, Ernest Ousu, says the Tafo Municipal Assembly will ensure calm in the communities as the police investigates the matter. Assembly, no, yeah, if say, no, no, a pan crony youth, any other black. The assembly is ensuring that we will resolve the conflict. The MCE helped when it last happened. We are hoping that it doesn't repeat itself again. Calm has been restored by the family is calling on the Ghana Police Service to fasten its investigation into the matter. For Joy News, my name is Nana Bwach Dankwa Yadom, Kumase. The bulk oil transportation company is facing allegations of mismanagement from a group known as the New Ghana Social Justice Forum. The group is pointing fingers at some senior managers for allegedly engaging in questionable deals that have led to consistent financial losses, which it deems unacceptable and must not be allowed to continue. Leader of the group, Al Hassan Yahaya, presenting a petition of allegations after a protest, demanded the resignation and legal prosecution of top officials at BOSS, including the board chairman. The Auditor General's report also found that the BOSS board chairman, Mr. Echo Ackman, to create three companies to compete with himself to win BOSS contracts. Ghana was in fact scammed and nothing in the history of Africa. To this end, we call for the dissolution of BOSS board and prosecution 
of both top officials, counting on your immediate action. We have a laughable response from both. You are continuously going to court. You are continuously losing, and you are continuously paying you know, for the financial debt at the cost of the taxpayer, which is very, very unfortunate. This is what we call connived. Canana. They've connived with the plaintiff to loot Ghana, to steal Ghana. But on the D-Day, the Bolly Bolly Day will come, and all of them will be prosecuted. Assalamu alaikum. Meanwhile, well, management of BOSS has already dismissed some of the allegations while promising to look into them. Moses Mensah Sim is Deputy Managing Director at BOSS. I am not going to respond to any document here. The fact remains that there are a lot of unfounded allegations as far as I heard him. Luckily, BOSS has is financial audited 2016, 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 21, and 22. As I speak, we have been to the Public Accounts Committee in Parliament. They have reviewed all our documents. And again, the point to say the board chairman created three companies. As far as I am concerned, the boss chairman never ever participated in any bidding contract with boss. Let alone audit. let alone creating let alone creating three companies. We will look at your acquisitions and work on it accordingly. Feel free our doors are open. A high court in Accra has thrown out a contempt application filed against the Ministry of Trade and Industry, Katie Hammond. Mr. Hammond was accused of proclaiming that a sin of MP James Dachi Quaison will go to prison in a perjury case that is yet to be determined by the court. In a ruling on Thursday, the court presided over by Justice Mary Mamekia Yanzu said lawyers for the applicant failed to provide evidence to buttress the allegation. Richard Kujanyaku has more. Mr. Kwesin filed the writ at the High Court, citing Kobna Tahiru Hammond, MP for Adansia Sukwa for Contempt. Mr. Kwesin claimed Katie Hammond in an interview with Oyerpa TV during which he compared Mr. Kwesin's case to former legislator Adamu Dramani Sakandi. Lawyers of Mr. Jim Jachi Kwesin believed that a comment made by Katie Hammond were highly prejudicial and violated Mr. Kwesin's right to fair trial. Following that, Mr. Kwesin's lawyers prayed the High Court to punish KT Hammond. KT Hammond, in an interview, said, quote, There is something we call precedence at the court. This is the same thing that happened with Adamun Sakandi. He came to this house. The same NDC National Democratic Congress members were the ones who sacked him from parliament and took him to court. He was imprisoned and he eventually died and was buried. It is the same matter, he said. He further said, quote, They are making all kinds of noise about his swearing in. I prompted the former Deputy Attorney General, Dominic Aine, to tell the gentleman that we have seen this before in the House. He should leave this House before he would be jailed, he added. Given his ruling on the contempt application on Thursday, the presiding judge, Justice Mary Yanzu, said, quote, It was incumbent on the applicant to exhibit the full interview. Without the full complement of the interview, the court is deprived of the opportunity to know exactly what was said. The court, she noted, cannot rely on the manifestly incomplete publication to rule on a man who denies the content of the publication. There is no room for conjecture. Evidence was required. Mr. Kwesin, who is a member of parliament for Asan North, is facing charges of forgery and perjury in relation to certain alleged offences in the run-up to the 2020 Asan North parliamentary election. He is pleaded not guilty to five counts of forgery of passports or travel certificates, knowingly making a false statutory declaration, perjury and false declaration of office. Reporting from the court complex, my name is Richard Kujinyaku for Joy News.
And my name is Aisha Ibrahim from our studios in Kokum Limle. Now, government has granted Barari DV, Barari DV Ghana Limited, a subsidiary of Atlantic Lithium Limited, a 15-year mining lease to commence the mining of lithium at Ewoya in the Fansiman municipality of the central region. The lease incorporates new and enhanced terms intended to ensure that the country benefits optimally from the mining of the mineral. This includes an increase in royalty rates, states and Ghanaian participation, as well as value addition to the mineral to be mined. Speaking at a short ceremony in Accra, the Minister for Lands and Natural Resources, Samuel Abujina, reiterated government's commitment to ensuring value addition to the country's natural resources. A series of negotiations that have indicated we concluded an agreement with Atlantic Lithium for the exploitation of lithium in Ewoya in the central region of our country. And today, I am happy to report through you to the country on behalf of the president and his government that we are granting to the company, Atlantic Lithium, the mining needs to commence the construction of the mining of lithium in our country. For the avoidance of doubt, this is the first lease granted for the mining of lithium in our country. This is going to be the first lithium project in Ghana. And distinguished guests, the lease we are signing today, I should emphasize, differs from our standard mining lease. Standard mining lease we've um, been signing for many years in respect of gold, manganese, bauxite, and other known minerals in our country is fundamentally different from the one we are going to sign today. And as I've explained, this is because of the policy approved by Cabinet, which is to say that green minerals are to be treated differently. And um, if you want, for want of a better expression, the uh, mistakes which were made in the past, in, in, the, in the past will not be repeated uh, with respect to the green minerals of our country. And, and, and so the lease we are signing today as I've indicated, um, among others, has innovative provisions such as, and I'll list them copiously, such as one, an increase in royalties rate from the standard 5% to 10%. The company will therefore pay 10% royalties on all minerals mined. Two, an increase in the state free carried interest from 10% to 13%. Government will therefore hold 13% shares in the company, which will not, which we will not pay for, but will be entitled to dividends and other rights. Three, an additional government participation through the acquisition of shares. Thus, in addition to the 13% shares, government, through the Minerals Income Investment Fund, MIF, will acquire additional 6% shares in the mining company and 3.06% shares in the holding company, which is listed on the Australian and London Stock Exchange. This will bring government's interest in the company to 19% in the local company and 3.06% in the foreign holding company. Additionally, government and MIF will have represent representations on the board of both the local company and the foreign company to protect government's interests. To ensure that other interested Ghanaians benefit from this mining operation, the company will list on the Ghana Stock Exchange and their shares will be made available to Ghanaian entities and individuals, including SNIT, pension funds, and other high-income individuals. In addition to all taxes, royalties, and levies, including 1% growth and sustainability levy, the company, Atlantic Lithium, will also pay 1% of its revenue into a community development fund to be utilized for the development of communities impacted by their operations. In terms of value addition, the company has committed to complete a feasibility study for the establishment of a chemical plant within four months of the signing of the lease that is within
Scientists are warning of the possible presence of some poisonous heavy metals in some food crops and fish from mining prone areas of the country. The Environmental Protection Agency found high concentrations of mercury in fish from the Tano River tested in 2022. Similar tests conducted in some leafy vegetables and herbs found they absorbed disturbing concentrations of heavy metals. These are contained in the latest hotline Trust Africa multimedia documentary Poison for Gold, produced by Erasto Sassari. Don't go here, I said. The milky brown color of the rivers and streams flowing across the country indicate suspended particles, including poisonous heavy metals. Two years ago, Residents of Ewusiejo in the Ahanta West district of the Western region were drinking the polluted water, but soon they started experiencing strange afflictions, as recounted by Theodora Yamwa, a nurse in charge of the town's chips compound. Some of them came here with frequent urinating and also burning sensation when they are urinating. And also, some came with skin rashes. We fetched samples from the Tano, Brim, Butri, Ofin, Anuru, Ankobra, Pra, and other polluted sources of water to be tested for heavy metals at the Sheath Laboratory of the KNUST's Chemistry Department. After a week of testing, the results were in. For standard sick, we use the World Health Organization standards. The World Health Organization pegs the acceptable standard for arsenic at 0.0050 milligrams per liter, while the US and Ghana pegs it at 0.010 milligram per liter. The Oda, Brim, Pra, Ankobra, Enru, Ofin, Ashri, Butri, Subri, and Tano registered between 0.216 and 0.444 milligrams per liter, which is 0.434 milligrams higher than acceptable levels. This is 20.6 to 55.6 percent higher than acceptable levels in water using the American and Ghanaian standards. Dr. Eugene Ansa explains the test results. All these water samples that are coming from our water bodies in Ghana were found to be acidic in nature, that is having a pH less than 7. It means that it has got a corrosive effect and whenever you drink it, you have irritations in the truth. Drinking waters are expected to be neutral. In terms of toxic metals, Lead was ranked as the highest toxic metal present in all these water samples. And should anybody drink this water or even swim in these waters, then they are exposed to high levels of lead. The other metals include chromium, cadmium, and arsenic, and all these samples could not pass the quality standards. The Wenchi Greek Research Station in the Bono region is co- collaborating with Savannah Greek Research Institute to introduce a new technology under a project called Nutrient Catalyzed Agricultural Transformation Netcat. The project seeks to expose farmers to the best farm management practices that will enhance the productivity of their fields. Researchers from Savannah Greek Research Institute of the Council for Scientific and Industrial Research have been showcasing the maize demonstration field that has undergone the best farm management practices. Nestor Kafuya Juma has more. The Nutrient Catalyzed Cultural Transformation Project is a collection of research and training programs focused on improving precision nutrient management in Africa. The African Plant Nutrient Institute is implementing the project in nine African countries, including Ghana. 
Savannah Agricultural Research Institute is the implementing partner in Ghana and they are working with Wenchi Agricultural Research Station in the Bunu region to help maize farmers to embrace the new crop management system. The head of the Wenchi Agricultural Research Station, Sylvester de Clark Mensa, said root cut project will enable the farmers to go into intensive agriculture to enhance productivity of their fields. We are collaborating with the Savannah Agriculture Institute to undertake um, a trial uh, on nutrient catalyzed agriculture transformation practices. Uh, what we sought to do here is to be able to showcase that um, not only would you need a new variety or new breed of crop material, but again, it's very important to ensure that the right practices are being men 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 taken into consideration with regards to type of seed, with regards to land preparation, with regards to um, um, spacing. Application and the maintenance of the, the farm. Once that one is done, irrespective of the type of the variety that you are using, you are going to get at least an optimum yield that the farmer can benefit and it can even pay for the cost of production and make a good, good profit out of it. A senior research fellow at the Savannah Agricultural Research Institute, Dr. Muntari Abubakari, is the coordinator for Nutcat projects. What we are doing is that the selection of a variety is what we're starting with, and also looking at proper land operation, uh, weed management, pest management, and also harvesting of business. So we are taking all the farmers through this particular practice. So we are comparing what we have done as against what the farmer is doing. Dr. Abubakari made some observations after visiting some maize farms in Wenchi. For Wenchi, what we realize is that from the farmer's fields, unlike where we have to make sure that we plow the land and then we harrow to make sure that the land is level. You go to the farmer fields, sometimes you have hills which are on the hills and they still plant on them. So in that case, uh, you don't have the right plant population because once you are doing the dibbling, then you skip some portions because of uh, how the and uniform the places, but with our land we realize that it is ploughed and then harrowed to make it level. So in that case, once we are using the right spacing, you have a higher plant population and that one will translate into the yield. But in the case of the farmers, you realize that the right spacing is not followed because the land is not prepared uniformly as we, we, we saw in our fields. So the plant population there is not as ours. And the second thing is the fall army worm, which we realize has devastated a lot of their uh, maize plants. But in our case, because of the control measure we are taking in place, the fall army worm uh, damage is minimal. The Nutcat project is being implemented in the northern, northeast, savannah, and Bono regions with four demonstration sites in each region. Nestor Kafui Ajuma. Reporting. Paramount Chief of the Laura Traditional Area, Na Kabo III, has expressed worry over some key projects that were started by government but have stalled. The projects include the Laura Senior High School Assembly Complex, the Laura Municipal Hospital Infrastructure Development, and the Dikbe Bridge. Na Kabo was speaking at the climax of the Kombini Festival. Join us as Rafiq Salam reports from Laura. Laura Napo de Cabo the Third first commended government for initiating some key projects in the traditional area aimed at bettering the lives of the people. It's what we recall that life here is important, there are some projects which are considered as legacy projects of government were ongoing and at various stages of construction in the traditional area. These included Laura Senior High School Assembly Hall Complex, the GVX 
He was optimistic that most of the aforementioned projects would have been completed by the time they celebrate this year's festival. The projects, according to him, have however significantly stalled. <laughs> Napole Kabu, who also doubles as the vice president of the National House of Chiefs, also spoke about challenges faced by the Lora Municipal Hospital in infrastructure and other basic logistics. For it to operate efficiently, the emergency work project initiated four years ago by the Lora Development Authority, which is at the council at Mental Labs, will be completed without any therapy. I'm aware that the current management of the hospital has prioritized from my new project in readiness for funding support by NGOs and government. Reporting for the news, Rafik Salam, Laura. Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Hafiz Bin Saleh has reiterated government commitment to ensure that terrorists and their elements are warded off from the country. He explains that government is aware of the threat of these terrorists and their elements and has innovated the Gulf of Guinea social cohesion project in order to economically liberate the people from the trappings of these terrorist groups. Joining us is Upper West Regional Correspondent Rafiq Salam once again reports. Of Guinea Northern Region Social Cohesion, SOCO project seeks to contribute to the prevention of conflict spillover from the Sahelian countries by improving the social and economic resilience of the targeted northern region and strengthening regional dialogue across the Gulf of Guinea countries. The project is being funded by the World Bank with an amount of 450 million United States dollars and implemented in four countries, namely Ghana. Ivory Coast, Togo, and Benin. Ghana will receive 150 million US dollars out of the total amount EMA for the project. 48 municipalities and districts in the northern Gulf of the country are benefiting from the project. In the Upper West region, all 11 municipalities and districts have been enrolled into the project. Upper West Regional Minister Dr. Hafiz Bin Sali at a short ceremony to hand over 52 motorbikes, 15 laptops, and five pickups to five MDAs, Soko Zonal Office, and the Upper West Regional Coordinating Council noted that the Soko project is a game changer, pledging the support of the Upper West RCC to make it successful. It will liberate our people economically so that they are not entrapped to go to be attracted to do things that will go against the sovereignty of our nation. As you may be aware, terrorists are knocking on our doors. And if people, young people are there and they don't have anything to do, then they can be lured to do things that will go against their communities and indeed the entire country. Soko Zonal Coordinator for the Upper West and Savannah regions, David Yenki, disclosed that the various beneficiary districts have so far awarded six or seven projects and it's hopeful that work will begin before the end of the month. Right now, uh, the 11 districts in Upper West Region have outlined and have started awarding 67 sub-projects. And these 67 sub-projects are supposed to be um, started latest by close of this month. 
There are no contractors have received their award letters. And so these equipment and vehicles that you have seen here are actually going to facilitate implementation and monitoring of this subproject so that we ensure that those critical infrastructure that we are seeing, we want to uh, the, the community people to get will be delivered according to the prescriptions and prescriptions of the World Bank and the Ministry. We'll take a break on Joy News Desk and we'll return there is business. Lord of or of any premises or monthly or short tenancy. Set reminders and get ready for the academic showdown of the year. The 2023 National Science and Mass Quiz. It's time for the brightest young minds in Ghana to battle it out for academic supremacy. Expect mind-bending equations, heart-pounding moments, and nail-biting suspense as the best schools go head-to-head. -head. Who will emerge the ultimate champions and claim the prestigious trophy? Catch the action on TV, radio, and online starting 6th to 24th October 2023.
Hello, my name is Emma Davis. Let's do some business news. The Executive Secretary of the Public Utilities Regulatory Commission, Dr. Ishmael Aka, has called on students and other utility consumers to adopt efficient measures to manage their consumption. Speaking at the Sunyani Nursing Training College, Dr. Aka said the commission wants the students to know the process of resolving utility concerns and become ambassadors to help other to help other consumers appreciate the need to be regular in the payment of their utility tariffs. There is more in this report. The Public Utilities Regulatory Commission's engagement with consumers has been extended to tertiary institutions. In the Bono region, students of the Sunyani Nursing Training College were exposed to the activities of the Commission to regulate the provision of utilities and understand their concerns and the process of resolutions. The students who had their nagging questions answered were also taken through energy conservation and utility tariffs. Dr. Ishma Aka is the executive secretary of PURC. One big issue is that at times when they are not getting the electricity or water at a level uh, they want, uh, the challenge is that they go to the utilities. And when they go and they don't get the solution, there are instances where they don't more like have any option. So we are here to tell them that a PURC is there. But first of all, go to the utility that is providing the service. When you go and you don't get the satisfaction, reach out to PURC and we'll work with the utility to solve your issues for you. When they vacate, they go home. And when they go home, their parents and others, we think that they can be worthy ambassadors explaining, uh, not from PURC, but from their children, why they should be efficient, why they should pay their bills. With the increasing utility tariffs, Dr. Aka called on students and other consumers to adopt efficient measures to manage their consumptions. When you look at most universities and tertiary institutions, the facility user fee has a component that goes into utilities, water and electricity. And often we see students complaining that the fee is just increasing. So again, to also tell them that even if you've not rented but you are living in a student hostel, uh, you have that responsibility to be efficient in the uh, electricity and uh, the water you use. We have a social mechanism within the tariff. We call it a lifeline consumption for both electricity and water. For electricity, if you are not consuming more than 30 kilowatt per hour, you pay about 60% of what you should have paid. That means your tariff is subsidized. So if you don't need it, just put it off. If you are going out, put some of the things off so that you can be within that bracket to help manage your bill. The public relations officer for the student body at the Sunyani Nursing Training College, Michael Quason, noted that the first-hand information from PURC will help them reach out to students regarding the usage of utilities. And our next step is to also have one-on-one -on -one with the classes and the dormitories to learn how to regulate the utility. There are certain gadgets they are not supposed to. As it was shown there, especially television air conditioner that tends increase the tariff. So we will talk to them and we will make sure that this thing will put in I mean in a good measure. Precious Semevo Joy Business Sunyai. Lacking essential knowledge and strategies to manage small and medium enterprises as an entrepreneur hinders the growth and success of businesses. Entrepreneurs who lack funding and limited knowledge struggle to put together proper business plan and efficiently manage operations. As an intervention, a national entrepreneurship and innovation plan has equipped over 200 young entrepreneurs with comprehensive SME development insights for business growth and sustainability. Clinton Yeboah has more. The conference by NIP and Conrad Adna Stifton was on the theme, Understanding the SME Ecosystem in Ghana. It's brought together key stakeholders, including entrepreneurs, policymakers, and academicians to discuss challenges, opportunities, and strategies in the small and medium enterprise. Beneficiaries were provided insight on topics like status quo of SMEs in the enterprise system, academic training, and enterprise development. They were taken through the private sector in enterprise development and SME actors and their stories. Director of Programs at CAS, Joseph Ekjapon Damoy said the conference will provide participants how to understand and survive in the SME ecosystem. So we reached out to the NEIP and the Green Business School to see how best we can help 
solve these problems. So our initial discussion with the two institutions was that, okay, let's try and understand the ecosystem from our own perspective instead of just reading reports. So let's bring key stakeholders together to talk about the issues and then based on our understanding and interpretation, then collectively we can start addressing or helping to solve some of the problems. Chief Executive Officer of the National Entrepreneurship and Innovative Plan, Kofi Owusu in Kansa, assures that efforts like this will heighten entrepreneurial spirit to serve youth unemployment. Well, there's a lot going on and what we did was to have an overview of it, to encourage young people to take advantage of it, to grow their businesses so that in future we can have our own unicorns who contribute to our GDP. And government cannot do it alone. That is That's all for business. My name is Emma Davis. For more business news, log on to myjoyonline.com.